President-elect Joe Biden is meeting with transition advisors today. This comes as he has chosen the first top member of his new administration. Ron Klain will be his chief of staff. Klain served in the same role for Biden when he was vice president. He also worked for former Vice President Al Gore. Biden says Klain has been, quote, invaluable to him over the years they've worked together. More White House positions are expected to be announced soon. For more on this, I want to bring in David Litt. He is the author of Democracy in One Book or Less and a former speechwriter for President Obama. David, welcome. Great to have you with us. So we now know who Biden's chief of staff will be. What does this appointment signal? Well, Tanya, thank you for having me on this afternoon. Let me start by saying, if you look at Joe Biden's campaign, his promise that he was making as president and now as president-elect, it's about two big things. The first is unity, and the second is competence, just a government that can actually do its job. And I think Ron Klain is a perfect choice for both of those themes. Uh, if you looked at the congratulations pouring in yesterday and today, it's from the left wing of the Democratic Party, the moderate wing, even a lot of conservatives who may not agree with Joe Biden politically have nothing but nice things to say about Ron. And then the second thing is, this is the person who managed the Ebola response for President Obama. And, you know, that was a, a potentially extraordinarily dangerous situation. It was a moment when the American government marshaled its forces and uh, stopped the spread of a deadly disease. So this is somebody who knows how American government works. He's done it at the highest levels, and he can execute on all of these tremendous challenges that we're facing. So as you can see, I personally think it's a great pick. But more than that, I think um, you, you look at the consensus from all sorts of corners. Uh, it, it's clearly a strong choice for this position. And as you know, President Trump has yet to concede and continues to bring legal challenges. He also continues to attack the legal process of counting votes. So since you've written a book on democracy, how does this kind of rhetoric impact democracy when it's coming from the president? Well, in my book, the way I put it is this. Democracy is like Tinkerbell. If we stop believing in it, it dies. And for the president to do what he's doing, which is to basically say, because I didn't win the election, I'm going to go ahead and say this was fraudulent. And keep in mind, you know, he said there was fraud after he didn't win an Emmy. He said there was fraud after he lost the Iowa caucuses to Ted Cruz. So this is not the first time he's done this. He's attacking, attacking the integrity of our process with absolutely no basis in fact. And the most disturbing thing is that Republican senators, in particular Republican leaders, are not standing up to him. They're not standing up for democracy. Instead, they're saying they're humoring him. They're going to let him do this. They're going to tacitly endorse this strategy of attacking elections because you couldn't win them fair and square. So this is desperate. It's the epitome of sore loserness, but it's also bad for all of us, regardless of who you voted for, um, you know, a week ago. And so we did see record high numbers of voter turnout for this election. That seems to be promising uh, in terms of the long term health of our democracy. What does that reveal to you? I think it's great that we saw so many Americans get out and vote. And I should point out, uh, Democrats have for a very long time been saying high turnout benefits Democrats. I'm not sure that was the case in this election. Lots of Republicans came out and voted for the first time. And I think that that is good. High turnout is a good thing, even though I would have obviously preferred them to have voted for my fellow Democrats. So I hope what we see going forward is enough of this attempt that has been happening over the last decade to make voting harder and harder. And instead, let's make voting easier for everybody. That's how a democracy is supposed to work. And there's so much we could do that would make voting easier, from making it easier to register to vote, to expanding rather than contracting the, the alternatives available, like early voting and mail-in voting. Um, all of these things are just designed to make it easy to vote. And it's what they do in other democracies. And it's what we should be doing, again, regardless of what party you support, we should want our democracy to work. David, the General Services Administration has not officially recognized Mr. Biden as the winner yet. Explain to us how this would normally work and how this can create issues in a transition. So the, the GSA, the General Services Administration, needs to sign off on something that basically says, OK, the president-elect is the president-elect in order to release a certain set of federal funds, office space, 
um, more importantly, in order to give uh, President-elect Biden full Secret Service protection and um, to make sure that he has access to the classified information in the president's daily brief and that his team can start to work with federal agencies, all that stuff. Um, it is very important to note that the GSA, which is run by a Trump appointee, is supposed to be apolitical, but it's following Trump's lead and it's refusing to acknowledge what we all know, which is that Joe Biden won the presidential election and he is going to be president on January 20th. And for the sake of the country, we need to give him everything he needs to do his job well. That said, I just want to be clear, because I've talked to many people in the Biden campaign throughout this process, they knew this was coming. President Trump has never been a gracious loser. And so um, I think if you look at what Joe Biden and his team are doing, they're putting together an extraordinarily diverse, qualified group of people to run these agency review teams. They're thinking about what Joe Biden's going to do on day one. And they're taking all these calls from foreign leaders um, and moving forward. So ultimately, uh, you know, President Trump can do everything he can to hurt America during this process because his feelings are hurt. But it's not going to change the outcome of the election, and it's not going to change what Biden and his incoming team are focused on. All right. Author and speechwriter David Litt, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me.